Excuse me, Hello. sorry. <laughs> Uh, from uh, Besançon in Franche Comté in France, uh, and uh, we were asked to give you um, a small presentation about uh, the way we are working uh, in the regional area on the evaluation of uh, energy consumption and greenhouse gas emission of road transport. Um, and uh, first, I will just uh, make a, a very quick introduction to talk about uh, the observatory because I'm not sure everybody is aware of it. Uh, the, observa ob obser the OPTER Observatory is a multi-thematic observatory that deals with climate, air quality, and energy. And uh, um, it started from a research program uh, in 2005 by um, the labor uh, Thema Laboratory of the CNRS. And then um, we were asked in um, the early 2009-2010 um, uh, to take over the animation of the observatory. And at that time, um, the context in France was evolving. And uh, we were already working a lot on the climate change um, documents, management documents for the territories. But um, the local uh, documents were evolving toward uh, multi-thematic integration of both climate, air quality, and energy. So we uh, we took the um, the research program, the the, the tool that was produced in the in the research program, to turn it into an operational observatory. Uh, talk, uh, that was dealing with uh, those three them thematics. And uh, we, of course, worked a lot on the juridical framework, uh, injected some data, etc. And uh, we are currently doing a first a complete rebuild of the observatory tool that will be soon finished. Uh, just to, to give you a, a couple of figures about the observatory uh, that deals with something like 500 best data on air quality, energy, and greenhouse gas. And is used by uh, in the regional area by 40 over 40 structures and uh, 140 users, and uh, our data has only uh, been used uh, in over 30 uh, territorial management documents from the regional scale to uh, the municipality scale. So of course, to inject data in such an observatory, we need uh, we need a um, we need a, a lot of mod models or on data collecting, and uh, from the beginning we used a traffic model uh, because we bought a uh, we bought this 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 uh, transport modeling. Uh, you you have usually a big question when you want to evaluate the, the transport. You have uh, road co traffic counts, these dots, only dot measurements. And uh, it's not really answering the question when you want to evaluate, uh, to give a proper evaluation. Oops. Oh, OK. Uh, to, um, um, so we, from, from the beginning, we use this model because it, it allows us to get a, a depiction, or a reliable depiction of the traffic on the road network. I mean, uh, if we only had uh, the, tra the traffic counts, we wouldn't be able to do very much. And this is uh, especially important in air pollutant emission and air quality modeling, which is uh, at the beginning uh, from um, the structure that hosts uh, the Opti Observatory, which is at Montfranche Comté, is mainly an air quality monitoring um, organization. Uh, but also, it allows us to to give a, a better evaluation of energy consumption and greenhouse gas emission. So uh, this model, well, uh, you will see on the on this slide um, an, uh, an overall view of uh, all the modeling we do in the um, in the road transport uh, sector. Uh, it starts with a first step, which deals with uh, the purely the modeling of traffic. The second step that deals with the modeling of consumptions and emissions with a tool that uses the copper fork methodology. And um, we will just mention the last step that is also linked, which is how we use this data 
for the observatory or to produce further data that interest uh, that has an, in an interest in the evaluation of the impact of road transport. So the, the first step that might look very straightforward is modeling the traffic. Uh, it, is, it, it might seem uh, very simple. We just have uh, as input uh, the yearly traffic counts for the road for a given year and um, a serious load of socio-economical and census data that will be inserted in the, in the software suite. We use a cube software suite from CityLab, which is a, a quite a, a leader tool in the, um, in the traffic modeling, and uh, that will provide you, us with a scenario simulation for the year, uh, the given year. So we will uh, see more about, uh, of course, um, the modeling of the traffic in a, uh, further in the presentation. Uh, the second step uh, implies, of course, taking the, the data from the first step, which is the modeled road traffic, but also adding uh, more information about especially uh, the temporal variation of the traffic. So we, we, take, we use all the early traffic counts on the road that we can find. There are not a lot of those, but they are very, uh, very useful because uh, it allows us to um, insert in, uh, in, a, in, a, in the model we are running uh, an, an evaluation of uh, the saturation effect on the, on the road uh, at peak hours and uh, give more realistic uh, speeds uh, to use uh, the copper fork methodology. Um, I might have missed to mention that uh, the model as we use it uh, to model traffic so far only models the passenger car activity, so we have to complete it with uh, um, light duty vehicle, heavy duty vehicle, buses, coaches, two wheelers, and to give a, a more accurate um, vision of traffic. And of course, we also need um, the slope from the road network because it's uh, it's used uh, for especially for heavy duty trucks in the Copart Fork methodology. So we use Circular, which is a, a tool that has been uh, made by several uh, French uh, monitoring air quality agencies. Mostly, uh, at the beginning, it's a, it's a tool from Alsace, from uh, uh, our um, colleagues. And there have been some mutual, um, some um, further development that, been, that has been done on it by the, our colleagues from the region Provence Alpes Côte d'Azur. So this tool will turn the traffic intensity and the information of, of, on all the traffic evaluates uh, in, in the, through the day into data, consumption data, and emission data. Emission of pollutants, emission of greenhouse gas, and consumption of energy for the given year, the considered year. So we will have two uses for this data. The first will be uh, feeding into the web platform of the observatory, so we can make the data of, on, on energy consumption and uh, greenhouse gas emission available to the municipalities. And uh, the, se the, second, um, the second one will be also in, uh, injecting this data into our air quality models that uh, work both at the regional and local level. And that will allow us to model uh, more interesting information on air quality and evaluate say, something um, populations that are um, in zones uh, where uh, we do not meet the criteria asked by uh, the European Commission for air quality, for example. And this data will also be re-injected in the observatory, but in the air quality section. So. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about um, the model, uh, it began in, uh, in 2003. Uh, the regional council of uh, Franche Comté and uh, the local authorities representing the states for um, the, um, the, the traffic uh, management at, at that time uh, decided to create a regional observatory of transportation and to build a model. Uh, to have uh, to help uh, provide uh, a lot, of, um, I mean, uh, a better insight in the in the road traffic uh, for uh, for the management in the local area. 
So they, they did all the, the conception, uh, first part of uh, exploiting the model and uh, maintaining it. And uh, it was quite um, working quite well uh, for six years. Um, and we started actually using the data in 2006 for our need for, um, for um, greenhouse gas and uh, uh, pollutant modeling. Uh, but uh, then in 2009, there were some um, reforms in the structure of uh, the local authorities and uh, a lot of people were moving from one, uh, one structure to another and uh, we started losing, um, I mean, uh, we started losing the people who were actually doing the work, doing the technical work on the model. So we, we, had a, we made a first collaboration step in 2009 uh, in which we collected and tweeted the input data to, to get a, to a, a scenario for the year 2008. But after that, there was nearly nobody left to uh, manage technically the model, but still the people were interested in it. So it took a little time because of, well, in France it often takes a little time for decisions to be made. But uh, in 2011, there's a small uh, mistake on the slide here, uh, we started to have um, to 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 take over the technical management, but we're still doing it for the regional observatory of transportation. But we are managing uh, all uh, the upgrades and uh, the updating and upgrading of the model, and uh, we're doing that with uh, Sistra, which is a, a very big, I mean, worldwide specialist of uh, traffic modeling and. Uh, uh, they were there since the beginning. They are the people who actually built the first version of the model and have followed it for, for over 10 years. So we, are, we kept them because they are very, very uh, uh, knowledgeable about it and they, have, um, they are really the experts in France. Uh, technically, it's not it's Sistra, but also MBA. We might have heard about them, we are, which are very, very uh, well-known experts in France and other countries in England too. Uh, in the traffic modeling. So the characteristic of the traffic model, just to explain you, so, so you can, so you get a real insight, um, quick insight about it. It's a classic four-step approach. It's multimodal. We take into account road and rail transport at the time being, but we will see that it will be extended. It's providing us with annual average, average daily traffic for the passenger car part of the model for the time being. Uh, and it's using the Cube software suite. Uh, so you can get uh, a little insight of, uh, on this uh, screen grab about uh, a bit of uh, the model. So the model is it's basically a lot of data being processed, uh, data being processed but giving results, um, leading to more data being processed giving, giving results. So you got a, a little bit of uh, a modeling chain here. Uh, just to give you a rough estimate, this is uh, not even 1%, it's half a percent or a quarter of a percent of the size of the real uh, chain mm, of the real map of the data processing in the model. It's, it's really huge. So that's why it took us quite some time to, to get into it and we are only upgrading it. We are not building in from scratch. So when I say to a, four, a classic four-step model, it starts from traffic generation. You have places where traffic is generated and places where traffic will be directed. For example, generation of traffic is, can be um, as a living place, I mean a residential area, and the traffic destination will be um, works, jobs, and uh, job areas or commercial areas. Uh, this is the first step of the model. The second step of the model is traffic distribution. So it will uh, manage to say that traffic going from one point will go, uh, it will decide from um, starting from the, the first matrix in the, um, the traffic generation matrix, it will decide from which point it, it comes to which point it goes. Then there will be a, a model choice. It will choose if there's a solution in, uh, in rail transport, in public rail transport, it will choose depending on um, various factors like cost, time, 
and uh, of course availability uh, if it will use a public transport or a passenger car uh, vector and then the last part is the traffic affect uh, affectation it will uh, simply compute roads i mean uh, taking into account uh, the average uh, a load of the roads uh, to to give um, an accurate speed on them, uh, etc. So of course behind it we have uh, uh, the road capacities, a lot of equations, and uh, it will lead to computing uh, the most probable route taken by uh, people using their cars, and uh, of all this being aggregated from all the pairs of traffic generation origins and destination will lead to a map. A simulated map of the traffic. And uh, just to say, when we said we are updating and upgrading, of course we have to update all the socio-economical data. But the old version of the model it has, uh, was based on uh, on, um, on, a on a zone analysis of 4,500 areas in the country. In here, you can see Besançon, which is uh, the main town in the area. This is roughly this perimeter. It used to be uh, subdivided as all the big uh, big towns uh, in uh, in, a more, in small in smaller area. In the new version, we did a new, completely new um, zoning. We completely reevaluated reevaluated the way the zones were built. Because, of course, in 10 years, uh, a lot of things have, uh, have evolved. And uh, also, we have um, probably much more data than we used to have uh, when the model was first built. Another example is a road network. We used to work on a very regular road network, quite not very good quality, with 30,000 road sections. The, the, the new road network we have is much more detailed. We have over 2,000 road sections, and we have a lot of information on the road sections. We have much more, uh, quite a lot of variables to give a, give a more accurate, better description of the roads, a better understanding or better um, quantification of their uh, theoretical or actual uh, capacity. So uh, this is a, this is another another big improvement. Big improvement. Just to, to remember, when I, when I said about the observatory, uh, I forgot maybe to mention, uh, we work, uh, our goal is to provide uh, figures at the municipality level. But this is French municipalities. They are really small. In our area, we have 1.2 million people inhabiting, and we have 1,000. 800, nearly 1,800 municipalities. Some municipalities are really, really small. That explains a lot why you have a, a need of a lot of tools to be able to provide the answers that uh, the local authorities ask us, the state ask us. So uh, this upgrading and updating took, uh, the, well, we are only at the first phase. We have planned three phases for it. The first phase, well, we did uh, the first phase and a little bit of the second phase, uh, which was updating uh, the model and upgrading uh, the passenger car modeling to run the 2010 and 2012 scenario. That's nearly done. Um, we did already a, li a little bit of the phase two. Uh, because we spend more time on uh, the updating of the, um, the traffic generation step for the pa passenger car. But uh, in the year to come, we will also uh, focus our attention in, the, in a module we haven't been using yet, which is um, heavy duty truck model, because there is a threat model, model, model we can use in, the, in this model. And uh, we will also have to do a lot of work on the rail transport, Updating it hasn't been done yet uh, because uh, while well, mostly of time const const um, limited time uh, and availability uh, and of course we are considering uh, the year 2000 and 2012 and there was not a lot of uh, major evolution when we will be uh, doing the next scenario on year 2014 there was a new high speed uh, train line that opened in the regional area. And um, a lot of things has, have changed after that. So that's why we, of course, it wasn't a priority for the first two scenarios. 
And the last part, which is upgrading the multi, uh, upgrading uh, more deeply into the model, uh, the multimodal approach. Uh, so so far, so I told you we were uh, the passenger car is uh, fully operational. The freight model should be uh, investigated and probably operational next year. The public transport. Um, part is only rail transport, but we want to include also coach and buses and have um, a more accurate description of, the, of this part. So that will need a, a really a lot of, uh, of work in the reference matrix and we, we will explain you um, the consequences. Uh, but just for the parts that are, have uh, all, already been done, so that you can understand uh, the kind of um, work it implies. So we've been partially rebuilding the model, but only a part we rebuilt. We've been upgrading it so it fits all the new um, the new softwares, etc. And uh, we're talking about an, in, uh, an investment of 1,300 man hours, mostly at engineering level. And uh, we're talking about 22,000 euros over the last two years of software licenses, training, and tech support. And with that, we achieved, of course, what I told you about adapting the model to a newer version, improving the spatial resolution, having an updated and improved world network, gathering all the and processing all the input data. And we are about to finish the calibration and the scenarios for the year 2000 and 2012. But this is just the first step. Just to give you uh, a couple of figures, we estimate we roughly have uh, the same amount of work for the step two and three, plus roughly around 50,000 euro of tech support for some things that we cannot do internally and Systra must do. So this is really work intensive and very, very expensive tool to manage. And um, so, yes. And uh, actually, that's the last slide. Uh, that's something we wanted to emph emphasize quite, uh, quite a lot, because uh, it's uh, not something you will transpose easily to another uh, area. It's a very powerful tool, but it's a very demanding tool. OK. So we are up for questions. I hope uh, I was understandable. Esta de clima a la que eh, pertenece es una red formada por 1.700 eh, ciudades y municipios europeos que cooperan con pueblos indígenas de la Amazonía con el objetivo de reducir sus emisiones de CO2 y básicamente los municipios que eh, forman parte de esta red están comprometidos a reducir sus, sus emisiones. Él eh, nos va a presentar una serie de experiencias de monitorización de emisiones de CO2 en el sector de transporte. ¿Bien? Gracias. Eh, muchas gracias por la invitación. Eh, personalmente, Álvaro, la persona con la que, con la que siempre hablo. Eh, van a agregar mi presentación, por lo tanto, voy a, voy a hablar en inglés. Para eh, comenzar las preguntas, si tienen, las podríamos contestar. Bueno. So, uh -huh. in this way, the Climate Alliance is a network we are talking about 1,700 people in this city, 23 countries, uh, 
Berlin, 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 And that is the reason because of the Climate Alliance thinking for many years now what to do, what to do. For example, we are still in the year 2023, the commitment to make an account of emissions per capita because we think only per capita is possible to make a comparison of different municipalities. We take the commitment to Yet to develop some inventories, the inventories have to be very, very similar because only only and we want to make a, a final step concerning the standard for the future for the calculation. And in this way. We develop a report region. is a tool. We uh, uh, took the sound from Switzerland and went to Germany. Germany. Uh, uh, we have many, many data. Um, um, in Germany now, now thousand monitors are using this tool. Uh, Regions, the regions for example, the region north of uh, here in the corner, is uh, recommended to um, implemented this tool in Italy and in Luxembourg. Um, And we have talked about the European Commission. It's a relevant tool for the calculation of emissions of the covenant of mayors. Because this is something we used to have. We have a couple of tools with the recommendations to put no much so many problems in Europe at this, this official recognition. And it's under my name. Um, and these two calculate the economical activity of the municipality, agriculture, industry, service, municipal buildings, and the most difficult thing is the transport. The most difficult thing is the transport because it's very, very difficult. We are talking about different kind of transport, public, bus, metro, suburban railway, private transport, motor drive, and um, of course the freight traffic, and the long distance traffic, trains, and air traffic. Um, we discuss a lot how to develop this methodology. Uh, um, we research a lot. And we for example, the yearly average from all the different vehicles uh, considered. That means we research the construction of the vehicles from the from 1990 to today. Yeah, considering the power use of the vehicles, it's their diesel, gasoline, ATC. We get the list of this travel by all these vehicles. We are talking about thousands of kilometers, vehicles, kilometers, but 10 kilometers for the transport of the goods. 
we use the vehicle register by the municipalities and we could calculate how could be the energy consumption and the CO2 emissions at the uh, tra transport sector in the municipal. As was the beginning, Mm -hmm. um, the year 2011, we improved this methodology a little bit more for Luxembourg because we get more data of the country, the Luxembourg country, um, coming from the technical authority. The, the um, that means we get a BVD with all the information concerning these vehicles from the year 1950. And we research this data carefully and we could calculate many, many parameters because we have many information we get, for example, the age of each vehicle. In what municipality are these vehicles made? That means a, a municipal calculation is possible. <coughs> we get the model of the vehicles, kind of carburant, and the number of vehicles in Germany, the number of kilometers different vehicles. We are talking about the lorries, we are talking about cars, we are talking about camionettes, different things. Um, and in this way, it's possible for the, for the country Luxembourg that Luxembourg has a problem too because the line is cheaper than many people go there to Germany. And for Luxembourg, just as we saw in the last presentation with Kibutwa, how is the situation? How many carbon cars are the same in the capital? How many carbonates are the same in the capital? And this way, it was possible to make this calculation at the municipal level. This information. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. But anyway, this methodology is perfect. Why? Because we have a mix. We have a mix. We are using territorial methodology for the country because we can calculate the public transport in the boundary of the municipality. This is metro. It's possible to make a but for the and for the private transport, we're using a infrastructure with this 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 car traveling. We don't know exactly the only information we have is that they are registered at the municipality. And for this reason. The use of this information for the, for the description of the implementation of measures, the CO2 protection measures, is difficult too. Because if you are not where this car is traveling, it's very difficult to implement the specific measures. You can say you can you can implement general measures, but not specific to different districts in the municipality specific roles, this kind of thing. And we get some from this point of view. Uh, okay, we have a similar in Georgia, for example, but this is not so important. The most important thing that is we get we we, we get we get sun critic and in Germany, we have the situation that the German, the German government is giving money to the municipality for the implementation of measures, of climate protection measures. And for this reason, the municipalities in Germany are obligated to the um, calculation of the CO2 inventory. That means 
CO2 inventory is a condition for getting money. And I think in French, in France, we are going to have maybe a very similar situation in a couple of years. Um, and anyway, we have a very, I think the connection between calculation of, and money is going to be there too, because at the, at the, in the Covenant of Majors, we have many, many times the discussion, is it necessary to have a CIAP to get money from the EU, for example? That is something, that is something uh, we are discussing some, many times internally with the municipality and with the European Commission too. And okay, and the, the German government was very, very interested to have a standard, to have a national standard for all the municipalities in Germany. More or less, we can say now there are 2,000 municipalities in Germany calculating CO2 inventories. Um, for this reason, we get this project from the Environmental Ministry in Germany to calculate, to develop a tool that we are developing now for um, CO2 emissions, potentials and the scenarios. The graphic disappears somehow, I don't know why, but it's not a problem. <laughs> uh, potential scenarios is about to, to, to calculate the potential uh, of renewable energies at the municipal level from the transport too, um, uh, to develop a scenario, a technical and political scenario for the future till 2030, 2050, including the transport. Benchmarking, benchmarking is the description of indicators, okay? Goal of the benchmarking is to make a comparison between the municipalities uh, because um, CO2 emissions or, or numbers cannot express everything. And for many things, you need a, a, a compare, you need other, other indicators. One indicator, one, one indicator we are going to use for sure is the model split. That means the number of pedestrians, the number of cyclers, uh, uh, the number of people using public transport at the municipal level. But anyway, we have to think um, by, the, um, by the development of the indicators because they are not finished. We have to talk, about, uh, to talk about this topic and this is something we are going to describe next year. Because this project is on work, we can, we can say now. We have started in 2013. We are going to be finished uh, the next year. We are programming now, right now. That means the methodology, the methodology is already fixed, it's already defined, and we are we are programming and deciding menus and tables and this kind of things. Um, this tool should be available for more or less 12,000 municipalities in Germany. And not only municipalities, we are talking about counties, provinces, and regions. That means all public administrations should be able to use this tool. That is the most important, that is the most important goal. Um, we as the Climate Alliance are project director of the tool. I myself, I'm very, very implicated in this project. I'm responsible for the data system, for example, for the import of data, for the programming, and for the test. And we're involving, of, okay, what we make is, is to be accurate, but we have a pragmatical and practical point of view too. We involve municipalities by the decision of the development of the job. We have a test a test period involving 14 municipalities, one county, one region. And we have meetings with these people discussing topics. And anyway, the municipalities are going to decide how the final methodology, methodology should be. This is for us very, very important. It's not only about making a model, something scientific, 
No, it's we want that the people use the tool. And that is only possible if you involve the people from the beginning. Um, should be not only for, for experts. Our opinion is that the, the municipal employees should work with this tool. You don't need a very, very special uh, know-how to work with this. Because, for example, we want, we want to import so much data as possible. That means, okay, the municipalities have to research their own data, but we want to allow the import from data coming from different sources that, so that the work for the municipalities uh, is a little bit easier. The methodology was um, consensuated, we can say. Um, we discussed the methodology in different workshops and meetings with environmental institutions, with experts, with the municipalities, and we have the guarantee this the, the, the final methodology is going to be accepted for the more important key uh, persons and institutions in Germany too. I think that is a very important uh, point too. We agreed to use some um, LCA and uh, methodology, uh, um, and we took an agreement about the, the CO2 emission factors too. And one important thing is that not only the calculations should be, should be a standard, the presentation of the results is going to be a standard too. That means the, the multiple that we use this tool are going to have some kind of obliga obligatory pictures or obligatory graphics. Um, if you don't put very important numbers in the in the CO2 inventory. If you don't if you don't want to put some information, then you are not going to get some visible graphics, for example. Okay. It's about the um, accuracy is important, but the um, comparability between the municipalities is very important too. Um, concerning the, the scenario, uh, the scenario, just to say that the data from the CO2 inventory are going to use for the development of a scenario. That, that means the basis for the calculation of the scenarios are the CO2, the CO2 emissions data and the energy consumption map data. And according to this, we are going to develop these um, scenarios for the transport. Cons considering the different technologies, developments, so on. And of course, investments at the regional level are playing, are playing a role in these scenarios too. On how the new methodology at the transport sector looks like. Um, we are now focused on a um, territorial methodology. That means we calculate only on the boundaries of the municipality. And for this reason, uh, we, uh, we thought again about the private and the commercial transport, because uh, as I said, for the, for the public transport is no problem normally. But the, the, the private and the commercial transport is a, is a very big problem. And um, we are making different things. We are similar, uh, yeah, similar to, the, to, the, to the presentation from the beginning. We have 30,000 cameras in Germany controlling the traffic. And we are using the information of these 30,000 cameras to make an analysis of the flow, of the traffic flow. And we are dividing this traffic flow at the municipal level. And that is something, that is something that the national um, uh, environmental energy at the National Environmental Agency 
in Germany is making because they are controlling. Now they have a new project where it's possible to get all this kind of data and they are they're making a big analysis of the data and they, they can divide this data at the, at the municipal level. That is possible now. That was something that it was not possible for a couple of years. This is really new. Um, um, and for example, we are having we are having uh, companies like the the national railway company, the Deutsche Bahn, who is going as that the specific data for the transport of persons or for the transport of goods at the municipal level too, because they have a a, a program, they have a, a system, an internal system that make possible the division of the data for Germany, too, for example. Oh. Um, another, another very, very important uh, thing is that we are involved, we are involving all the statistical departments in Germany. We have a meeting for, for I think, three weeks now uh, with these persons describing what kind of data we are going to need for the calculation and asking them to deliver us so many data as possible as possible at the municipal level we have we have heard before sometimes we have many data but they are separated divided in different departments and what we try is to get all this data in different statistical departments and to put all together and to import them in the tool. Only statistical data, we are talking about 240 data per municipality. And I think at the end, we are going to calculate something like 2,000 data for municipality. Um, this is this is something new. This is something new. This approach to to try to get and to try to centralize all the data in one tool, only one system tool, is is, is something is something new. Um, um, one important thing, one important thing, I um, is that in the future we are going to have a very big spectrum of data. Uh, in one tool, we are going to have all this important data, all this, this, this data we have import, but the data the municipalities are going to put inside. And this tool is going to give us the opportunity to make further research, we can say. Just to make, uh, to make control of the data and to make further analysis about, for example, data that now are not very available, like um, bus transport or tram transport in different municipalities. I think we are going to have the opportunity to make maybe some cooperations between the public transports in different municipalities, different sizes, so on. The tool allows us an analysis at the, region, at the uh, regional level, the different regions in, in, in Germany, but uh, allow us an analysis at the national level too. And for me, there is something very, very clear. This new development is possible because now we have new data possibilities. What we, we didn't we didn't for we didn't have for seven years when we start with ecoregion with the development of the ecoregion. Um, I'm very pragmatical. In my opinion, it's not about developing methodologies just for fun or something scientific. Your methodology is so good at, at the data of the quality is. That means you need in deep uh, available data to develop a methodology. If you don't have the data, it's not going to be possible. And in this way, I, I think I think you have to you have to use the data the, the data you have, and later 
you have to try to, Im to improve the data availability and the data quality. And that is an European challenge too. This is not only a national problem we have, this is an European challenge. And for example, Alvaro, in uh, his presentation, talked about, um, about um, European directives. I think this is an opportunity we have. European directive for, for energy efficiency, considering different, uh, different sectors. Transport is one of these, of these sectors. This, the implementation of, of the, of the, uh, by the implementation of this directive, it is possible to make, to describe some rules for the, um, for the data collection or the, for the data, data uh, delivery to municipality coming from different institutions, companies, and so on. And that is, I think, I think the people working at the European, at the European level is something have to discuss and to talk a little bit more. How to improve the quality of the data at the European level and trying to make a, some influence um, to describe some, some general rules. Because otherwise, it's going to be, it's going to be for us a very complicated or maybe we're going to have a yeah, difference between countries with a high quality of data and countries with a bad quality of data. That's all. Thank you very much.
representativa. ¿Alguna otra pregunta? Yo tengo una pregunta, bueno, igual más que una pregunta es un comentario. Está un poco relacionado con lo que, con el, lo que comentaba Miguel al final de su presentación del par de research. Y, bueno, he visto que los egoístas que se han presentado tienen un nivel de detalle, vamos, que es eh, impresionante. Y eh, provee una gran cantidad de información que es muy útil para, para la toma de decisiones. Sin embargo, por poner una pera, quizás yo he hecho de menos en estos modelos que no tienen eh, en cuenta muchas variables socioeconómicas. Me explico. Desde el principio, en la primera sesión, hemos estado hablando de la necesidad de eh, cambios en los comportamientos, de la posibilidad de utilizar subvenciones para fomentar determinadas tecnologías o, o pues, para, para evitar determinados comportamientos. Y sin embargo, quizás estos modelos fallan a la hora de ser capaces de simular el efecto ex ante de esas políticas. Ex post ya hemos visto que, que dar una información muy útil de qué es lo que está pasando. Es el caso, por ejemplo, de, 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 de lo que, eh, que ha presentado Carlos, pues, el, el problema este del efecto frontera. Pero bueno, sin más, es, es un comentario y no sé si en qué medida eh, vuestros modelos son capaces de integrar ese tipo de... Eh, de poner de contexto por la parte que me toca. En principio, detrás de los modelos que hemos creado nosotros hay unos modelos de transporte y tráfico ya, y para explicar que, que, que el observatorio francés eh, tiene un modelo de cuatro etapas, todos los que nos dedicamos a movilizar el transporte tenemos estos modelos por detrás, que son los que nos... los que podrían servir para restituir ese, esos comportamientos nuevos o futuros y donde se podría introducir. Luego pasaríamos a estos modelos de de consumos de combustible y emisiones, pero que tienen que ser alimentados por estos modelos de transporte anterior, que ya es, es, es el, el caso. Gracias. Con respecto a nuestra herramienta, eh, hay una descripción de las emisiones basadas en datos reales y luego hay un escenario. Y ese escenario primeramente se basa en los datos reales pero ese, ese escenario se puede modificar eh, teniendo en cuenta las medidas que los municipios están dispuestos a implementar. Es decir, que si un municipio dice yo quiero hacer una inversión en coche eléctrico o en transporte urbano biogás o eléctrico, obtiene un escenario disti distinto a otro, a otro municipio que no lo haga. Es decir, que los escenarios sí que te dan la oportunidad de ver el impacto de las medidas también socioeconómicas, tecnológicas y socioeconómicas. Creo que lo que estás pidiendo es son modelos de análisis de impacto y simulación de medidas. Sí. Y claro, para este tipo de cuestiones necesitas un modelo más integrado. Te voy a poner un ejemplo. Si estamos analizando el transporte, la actividad industrial genera tránsito de mercancías, por ejemplo. Entonces sí. necesitas un modelo con una visión más integral. El modelo socioeconómico eh, precisa de vivienda. Lo que pasa en el tema de la vivienda es importante. ¿verdad? Entonces se necesita un modelo con visión más integral. Todos son modelos de previsiones o de de medidas energéticas, etcétera, etcétera. Yo creo que responden a objetivos diferentes. De hecho, a eso me refería yo cuando hablaba del partner research. Que la necesidad de desarrollar ese tipo de modelos de, que, de tal forma que sean capaces de, de eh, evaluar de una forma integrada en las diferentes eh, interacciones entre pues, el comportamiento económico e industrial, en la de comercio exterior, el comportamiento de las personas, las políticas fiscales. Nosotros lo llamamos eso cálculo iterativo. Quiere decir que tienes muchos componentes que tienes que mezclar. Y bueno, es una cosa que se puede hacer no para todo, pero claro que hay que ver determinados impactos y crecimiento económico y población, etcétera, etcétera, por supuesto. Sí. ¿Más cuestiones? 
Pues son las cuatro y media pasadas. Igual eh, pasamos ya a, a clausurar en la jornada. Eh, muchas gracias a, a los ponentes y gracias a, a Estefan también. Y va a clausurar la jornada eh, Chechu Mijana, que es director de estudios y planificación del gerente Vasco de la Casa. Thank you.